is absolutely awfully hot today. I don't know if you can hear, but the cicadas are just, they, they, the minute the sun comes up, they're making crazy sounds. They're just, they're going all day. But um, I just went, quickly wanted to show some of the work that Serge has been doing around the um, washing out the render and cleaning the concrete and stuff. Looks fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. Oh man, I tried to come out here to do a quick bit of filming. It's way too hot. <laughs> I think we're going to go back inside. This is the worst part about uh, summer in Queensland. It's um, unbearable the majority of the time. So part of my New Year's resolution, well, I don't like to say resolution, let's say maybe my New Year's commitment was to get more out and do more photography. And like I love photography, I've been doing it for probably, whoa, 10, 15 years, so to, sp so to speak. And um, I just love it. So. Part of that was to get more involved. I do more creative things, things that I normally wouldn't think of doing or challenge myself in doing. So I joined a thing called the 52 Frames um, and it's a weekly challenge. And so far I've submitted three um, submissions and it's going really, really well and I love it. So I'll link the details to my uh, Instagram for that particular uh, profile uh, below if anybody's interested in sort of homestead looking photos. So, um, it's everything basically on my property, um, but whatever the theme asks, if that makes sense. So yeah, so far it's been really good. I've actually been um, pushed out of my comfort zone um, and you know, to try different types of photography technique or not use the same techniques I normally do to produce a photograph or that kind of thing to see if I can get a different result. So that's been really fun. to cure? Well, I'm not sure, but um, that's why I'm doing it now. Yeah. 
That way I can paint tomorrow morning. Yeah, so you can dry. So give it overnight to actually harden up. You can see how much it's actually taking yeah. in. Yeah. They're under so porous, so it's just taking it all in. Yeah. It's taken so long to get this project done, don't you think? Just because the of the weather. Yeah, the weather's been shit. It's the weather's been crap. And this stuff, especially with the paint. Yeah. That we're going to apply is um, the paint for the garage, for the shed, and it's got to be set in humidity and it can't be too hot, it can't be too cold. And... Gee, look how much it's taking it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be okay. I wonder why some spots take more or less. Um, I think. I think it's moisture level of the concrete, maybe. Could be, but also could be. Or well, um, the thickness I'm of probably it. Probably should be putting thicker than that, but I'll just run a quick coat just to make sure I've got enough for everything. So. Yeah, Am I allowed to step on this or no? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've just cleaned it. My goodness, I didn't realize you'd done so much. <gasps> no, that looks perfect. Uh, I would like to be a little bit darker, but it's only a first coat. Anyway. I think you might be surprised. Okay. I think you might be surprised when actually the whole space is done, how good it's going to look. Wow. It makes a massive difference. Yes. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very stone looking, the colour. Very thick too. Is it? Thick stuff. It smells like it's really a boxy sort of thick. Is it heavy duty? I really like it. Uh, they call it heavy duty industrial. It's for your workshops and like so you can drive on it. And you know what it looks like? What? Clean, fresh concrete. Yeah. It actually looks like clean, fresh concrete, like you've just put concrete. Yeah, that's a good thing because it's going to match everything at the back. That's right. The same. I really like it. Those cicadas are right now. Oh, you come out and they just ring in your ear. Do you think that you'll have enough product for a second coat? Oh yeah. So we got. I think we've got 22 square meters. Yep. Underneath the veranda. Yep. Um, and then the rest of it is going to be the drum and wood for about 60 to 70 square meters. So yep. Uh, yep. 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 It should be enough for everything to be finished with the 20 liters so. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's good. Oh, I'm going to go charge this camera for the first time. Okay. 
So I'm going to, uh, I'll come back later when you've done a bit more. Good morning, everyone. It's been a few, few days, few weeks. It's been a bit, um, been a bit crazy lately with the weather. So it stopped us from doing projects, a lot of projects. But I'm going to show you a few things. So I'm going to show you the front where Serge has done the painting and the render. It looks fantastic. Initially, he was really worried about the color, but I actually think it's perfect. And oh, I'm holding this crooked. <laughs> Still getting used to this new vlogging camera. And um, and then I'll show you the gate. So we purchased some farm gates uh, from an auction house. Oh, like a couple of months ago. Actually, we purchased one like a year ago. <clears throat> this beautiful, like goes up in a curve and it's got this picture of like a deer and the mountains, like wilderness kind of looking, which doesn't really suit where we are because we're like in a woodland area and we also don't have that kind of <laughs> bush. Do you know what I mean? So it's not really Australian looking, but that's okay. But anyway, so we decided, no, when we move to the big farm, we'll put those gates on there. So um, so we bought those gates, got them really, really well priced, and they're huge. They're like six metres wide or something. They're huge and like three, four metres tall. And, um, and we were like, no, 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 we'll leave it. Anyway, some time passes. We find this, there's another auction, there's more gates. So we buy a second pair of those gates, and we thought we'll sell it. And then I saw this beautiful straight one. And I thought, oh, the straight one would be really good at the front here to finish off, like to do the fence and that. And so the weather's just been absolutely awful. We haven't been able to do like almost anything because even like with the painting, it was so humid. Um, it was either humid or it was raining. So according to the directions, you can't, you know, um, paint it if it's like between up to 28 degrees C and certain percent percentage of, that's enough, percent, certain percentage of humidity. So anyway, so Serge has been doing it kind of like in the afternoons, one or two hours and whatever. And so he, yesterday he dug out a trench for the gate frame. Um, and now he's going to get some concrete and he's going to get a wheelbarrow and a few other bits and pieces because he hasn't got it. Or he, we had a wheelbarrow, but, but it busted. So he's just borrowing a friend's wheelbarrow. And yeah, then he's going to do the front. So I'll take you out there later and we'll have a look at the front. Um, so hopefully now it's... The, the mid, that like high peak of summer has kind of, not really passed, but kind of passed. <laughs> the days are getting a little bit, um, like there's a little bit of a breeze coming through. So it's not like so hot that you can't breathe. I mean, it is, but anyway. So that's what we'll do today. So I'll take you out there to see what Serge is doing at the front. And yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right, I'm holding this in a weird way. This is the... The veranda surgery painted. This color is called, um, uh, I can't remember, but it's basically just like natural concrete color. So, see this here, the blue, that's the primer. He hasn't done that yet. So, this is the part that he's done. Just let the camera focus. Come on. There we go. So, obviously, this is because the, the mesh is black. The walls are brown, it can look a little bit darker, but we will actually put some more lights. So we've just got that light at the top. So we will put some more lights up to give um, to give more light at night. Alright. Alright, let's go. So here I am. Oh, sorry. Uh, here I am preparing a working on a new product for Homestead Soapery. One of the products that I've been meaning to do because I want to have um, a pet bundle. So the pet bundle will be a so two soaps, uh, an afterwash spray, and a pore balm. So I'm working on the pore balm now. I've already tested the spray and the because there's two soaps. So the soap one is a, an anti like for insect repelling etc for the summer months and it's got stuff in there that helps keep you know bugs away as does the afterwash spray the second soap i'm going to make for the pet bundle um the sort of revised pet bundle will be uh, one for sensitive skin so that's going to be probably up on the hopes of Surfery website in about a month and a half or so and that will be sold as a bundle so there'll be there will be a few changes coming to that product uh, just because obviously I used the market uh, as the first launch to see what worked well and what didn't work well. 
and there will be some refinement so I can't wait to show you what happens with that so I'm making two different versions of um, balm with with a base that's very similar uh, but I'm going to make just a couple of minor changes uh, and I've got uh, a friend of mine that's going to be testing it for me so um, let's get into it alrighty so that's the oil I think I'm gonna get a lot out of that actually um, so what I'm going to do is I've melted in my hard and I do have one soft oil. I've got three, two hard oils and a soft oil and some beeswax pellets. And obviously this is going to be unscented. So I don't use a bain, um, the bain marie method. You could use the bain marie method or usually that's preferred because it's a, like a lower heat over a longer period of time. What I do instead <clears throat> is I melt and then obviously because the beeswax pellets take a little bit longer i melt and then i stand out i take it outside and then i pop it in and i swirl it around a little bit and let it melt from the heat of the waxes the other oil sorry and then what happens is it tends to cool off a little bit doesn't overheat because some of the oils have different heat points and you don't want the the ones that have a lower heat point to get too hot or um or turn you know like they can turn so that's what i do and i do that for about five minutes and then i tuck it back in for another 30 seconds or so and i do the same and i do it slowly that way um, as opposed to standing over like a double boiler so that's cooled down now quite a lot and i'll pop it back in the microwave for another squirt and see how we go Alrighty. so excuse the background sound of the microwave this was put in for another minute. See how it's got nice and liquidy? This is perfect. Okay. So I've just split the mixture in two uh, and it was a good opportunity to get all the, <laughs> the extra solid oils off this because that's fantastic. Fantastic to use but really hard to get oils off. And because of the humidity currently in Queensland, my hard oils aren't really super hard. They're kind of medium hard, which is good. You can use them, but you don't, they don't take a long time to melt, to be honest. Alrighty. Okay. So in this one, you can see it's tiny, a little bit milky. Uh, I just put a starch in there to see if it would change consistency. It's already starting to cool and thicken. So I'm just going to warm it up quickly again so that I can actually pour it now that I've mixed it all in. Yeah, it's starting to change consistency. Actually, see how it's changed? So this would be as a result of the starch also absorbing any liquid and it's become this nice creamy looking yeah that looks great compared to this which just looks like pure oil right look at this looks like it's kind of got a whipped consistency that looks great Yeah, that looks really, really good. So I've just got these little containers. This is a 50 gram container. These will take ages to use up, like age, absolutely ages. So there's no need to um, make them any bigger. So see, this is a lot more, see the consistency? It's a lot more paste-like which means it'll be much easier to spread. And this one weighs, actually, this is five grams. 50 exactly. So this is actually perfect size for this container.
This one does set a little bit. Um, this one does set up a little bit quicker. All right, so I'm going to make a, another whipped version. I don't know if you can see, I've put a little bit of the starch in there. And I'll just keep mixing it now. So this is just going to be for me. So I can test it on my dogs. Not that Misha will necessarily let anyone go near her feet, but Mix will. This will be a lick-proof and lick-safe mixture. So that dogs that do lick their paws, uh, you know, don't make themselves unwell. Yeah, and that's it. This is a product testing day at Homestead Soapery. This is what we do. I'm crouching down because I've only got a very small tripod on this camera at the moment. But this is what I do. Whenever I do a product testing, I try different variations. I have a look at a different, at, um, hold on. Um, I have a look at different, you know, recipes. I research about different oils, their benefits, what they do, you know, what their melting points are, how they set up, you know, if anything else helps them set up, you know, makes them thicker how long they last for without preservatives. I'd prefer not to have any preservatives in my products because that's adding extra chemicals that's unnecessary. So, you know, things like that. that that's what I basically do. And then come in here, test a little bit, give, give samples away to, you know, randos or my friends, you know, depending on what I'm testing for. So for example, um, my next project or the next thing I'm working on is a shampoo soap bar. And obviously, you know, hair is different for everyone. Some people have dry and frizzy hair, some people have oily hair, some people have thinning hair, etc. And so basically what I do is I put out a broader call out on social media or on Reddit, and I ask people to, you know, send me their details and I send them a free bar of soap to test. And all they have to do is provide me feedback, you know. So I definitely hardle, ha harness and utilize um, the public whenever I can to make my products. And yeah, other than that, things like this, you know, puppy paw balm and, and stuff, I, I can get family and friends to test out and give me their, their feedback before I launch a product. But yeah, all my products go through a launch, a, a test phase and a research phase, and I don't ever um, make a new product or, or launch anything, anything on the Homestead Soapery website without first testing it thoroughly. So that's the process. Now you see a little bit of what I do when I'm in the studio. So as you can see, all I did was put in for this amount, uh, I put in like half a tablespoon of, of starch. And I just kept mixing it until it absorbed. Working with starch is the same as, as making like a roux, you know, like whenever you're making, um, you know, a roux for, for dinner, you know, like in cheese sauce, etc. It's working, it works it the same way. Don't ever put too much because then it'll get too thick. The whole objective of it is to make sure that you um, are able to get it to absorb any moisture and any oils that it needs to before um, letting it set up. This is fantastic. It actually gives you exactly 50 grams if you fill it right to the top, which is perfect because you don't want to be skimpy or stingy with your product. And that's it. I'll just let that set up. I'm not going to put it in the fridge because the, the deodorant that I made yesterday, I put it in the freezer, went really hard, which was fine. It set up really hard. Then I had to drop it back down to room temperature to be able to use it. Oh, this is lovely. So I don't know if you can see it's going to be a little bit hard. See, I've got a tiny little bit of a shine. That's just from the oil, but it's. It, I don't have any oil on my hands. My, my hands aren't greasy, you know. It's fantastic. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. There is another one coming up pretty quickly, actually. 
I'm going to do an unboxing of the camera that I'm filming from now and my new lens, which was my birthday present, which was a few weeks ago. Happy birthday to me. Um, <laughs> and also take you for a bit of a cruise around our township um, because I went on a bit of a photography expedition for one of the uh, weekly challenges. So that was exciting. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Apologies it took so long to get done. Um, hopefully we will be on a regular filming schedule now each week because now it's sort of the weather starting to change a little bit and get a bit better. So it might just put us um, in a better position for more filming and more projects. Plus, I'm actually going on two months leave as of the end of this week. So um, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of projects and, and horsey things and things that I'm going to get done whilst I'm on this break. So I can't wait. So make sure you like, subscribe follow, comment, all that kind of stuff. I really hope you're enjoying doing the vlogs. I'm enjoying filming them and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.